Boy, they're really not gonna like this video. <laughs> it's barely been a month since the Nintendo Alarmo came out and modders are already hard at work finding ways to mod the thing. So let me show you the process on how to get this whole thing set up and show you some cool software people have already managed to get running on this alarm clock of all things. And don't worry, yes, there is a way to get this working without having to take apart the clock. Boy, Nintendo really loves to be in their own little world, huh? <laughs> The Nintendo Alarmo. I feel like these guys are known now for making really strange tech that like no one really asked for. <laughs> if you happen to just not have a phone, Nintendo announced and released on the same day, the Nintendo Alarmo, a $99 alarm clock that will wake you up with a bunch of Nintendo related music and characters and all the types of other stuff. And don't get me wrong, I really like it. Uh, it oddly has that soul in the sound and the music that I remember much more vividly from like the 3DS and the Wii U days compared to what we have now. Gray, gray, I, I love gray. Gray's fine seven years into the console. Anyways, of course, the Alarmo has a bunch of music to wake up from, from all their favorite games that I would just love to play for you here. Uh, unfortunately, I know these guys are just itching for an excuse to take me down, so I won't be showing any here, sorry. But this thing is pretty legit. It has a bunch of different motion sensors that can detect your bed size and when you actually physically get up from the bed. And it's surprisingly really robust in terms of settings and features and even Wi-Fi connectivity. That might be useful for something down the line. But that's not what we're here for. We want to see this thing run Doom. So how do we get there? Oh my god, I just noticed a test. Nice. Oh. Okay, so the first thing I want to mention is that I am not responsible for any of this work. I'm just showcasing the work of the Monty community uh, and just want to give credit where credit is due. These people are all smarter than I am. All these people have contributed in some sort of this project, and I want to give them proper credits. As it turns out, thanks to some incredible modders already, uh, we've almost discovered pretty much every single piece that goes into the Nintendo Alarmo. All the processors, sensors, storage chips, and most importantly, the debug pins, which is what factories use to actually control the processor in the Alarmo. So the thing is, because I know someone's gonna ask, even though the USB-C port in the Alarmo can still send and receive data through it, it can only execute Nintendo code. Now here's the thing, Nintendo actually forgot to program to check if any code is Nintendo's code. But even so, we personally still can't communicate with the clock in any way uh, because all the right permissions for the clock are locked behind a content key. Without that key, we can't send anything over to the Alarmo. Now, in the future, a dev by the name of Gary, who actually was the first person to get Doom running on this thing in the first place, is currently writing a software where it can grab your key for you using just a little QR code that'll display on the clock. And then you can just scan it and it'll give you your key that way. But that's still a work in progress and it's not out right now. Hopefully by the time this video comes out, maybe there's a bit more progress on it. But for now, our only option to be able to grab our key is by using the debug points in the back of the motherboard. That way we can actually talk with the Alarmo. Now this is gonna require some soldering and some debug boards and like wiring stuff together. Uh, so if you're not comfortable with any of that, maybe hold out until Gary's tool is out there and like released properly. Uh, but until then, I guess we're taking this thing apart. <laughs> I'm using my iFixit toolkit for this, but you really don't need anything fancy for this. But smaller ones like these have all the screws you'll ever need and they're like 15 bucks. I'll leave it in the description if you want one. Okay, so I won't lie, there's like no disassembly guides on the internet anywhere for this thing yet, it's so new. So I'm really just gonna try and freeball this. Uh, I see a single Y000 screw in the bottom. I'm gonna try and take a look at that and see if that does anything. Oh, 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 I see some, hold on, I see some. Yeah, so that screw is the only thing that holds this whole thing in place. And with a little twist, it just opens up. That do oh, oh, ah, it, yeah, ah. okay. And we can see the insides now. Just two cables holding the screen. And once that's off, we can take a good look at the board. But what we're really interested in is these debug pins right here. So here's the game plan. First, we're gonna use some of this 30 gauge wire and solder three points to the board. From there, we're gonna use some dew point wires. Think of them basically as just extension cords. So we have an actual connection to plug our solder points to anything. From there, we'll plug those into a debug cable, which we can then plug into a Raspberry Pi debug probe, which we can then plug into a PC to finally start messing with it. <laughs> if this seems like a lot, don't worry. It'll make sense once you see it all finished up. I'm gonna prep the wires by stripping them first and then putting on some tape to make sure that they do not move when I'm soldering. I want to make this as simple as possible. The less room there is to mess up, the better. Now, mind you, I am not a great solder. Uh, I, unfortunately, I just shake way too much for me to be any good at this. If anyone has any tips for that, I'd honestly love to hear it. But yeah, my soldering job is going to look really bad. <laughs> I know. But it didn't seem to touch any other pads. So technically, we should be in the clear. I don't know. We'll, we'll find out. Now, let's solder the other end to so those adapters that I was telling you about.
I again, I know it's really messy, but hey, I don't see you taking apart your alarm clock, so deal with it. <laughs> and then we can plug those into the debug wire. Here I am trying to make sure that they're plugged in correctly, but I color coded them beforehand, so this was really easy. And now we can plug that into the debug probe. Awesome. Now let's go check and see if we did everything right. We're gonna use a terminal tool called OpenOCD to check the connection. This has no user interface, so I did get some help with this from Gary. Damn, you know, I wonder if I could walk through TSA with this. Anyways, to recap, debug points are connected to the do point wires, which are connected to the debug cable, which is connected to the debugger probe, which finally is connected to the computer. I hope this is making sense. Okay, we're gonna launch OpenOCD and run a command to check for connections. And that line right there, that's exactly what we're looking for. The computer can see and detect the alarmless processor. We're in. Let's go, let's go. Okay, so we did everything right and miraculously didn't break anything. Awesome. Okay, let's clean everything up. Apparently there is a way you can put it back together so you still have access to the debugging pads. If you remove the CMOS battery and the little plastic trim piece behind the USB port, we actually have room to route through the cables. Nice. And there we go. Our Alarmo is all ready to tinker with. Again, I probably wouldn't board a plane with this, uh, but this is still really cool to look at nonetheless. Okay, now let's go grab the key. Now here's the funny thing. Yes, this key is unique to this Alarmo device specifically, but the key is the same for every single Alarmo. And because of that, there's a really good chance that this key is eventually gonna find its way onto the internet. I'm personally not touching that because I feel like that could be somehow be perceived as distributing copyrighted content. And I'm sure Nintendo would just love to strike me down for that. So. I'm not sharing mine, I'm, I'm sorry. But once you do have this key, yeah. Uh, now you can push code to it, do whatever you want. Now again, the scene is still really, really new. I mean, it's only been a month since this thing came out, but people are slowly trying to figure out and piece together what we can actually do with this thing. So in order to grab our key, we're gonna use a program that's literally just called Key Brute Forcer, which will crack the key for us. It's actually really hilarious how it does this. Gary has a phenomenal write-up on how this entire process works. Uh, definitely go read that if you're into that type of stuff, but I'm gonna try to give you my simplified normal version it's a little bit complicated, but if I do my job right, hopefully you've leave the explanation understanding how this kind of works. I'm gonna scoot over here because I need a little bit of room here. Okay, so the key is made up of four 32-bit integers, which is a total of 128 bits. What that means is, think of it like your phone, you know how like your phone has a passcode on it and everything? Well, the clock has a 39 number passcode <laughs> and you have to get all of the numbers right in order to get into the clock. That's a lot of possible number combinations. Actually, hold on. As a matter of fact, I gotta zoom out for a second here so you can see. Uh, this is the exact amount of different possible combinations for a 39 digit passcode. It's unfathomably large. But thankfully, because the passcode is split up into four different parts, that means we can check each line individually and then just make it a lot easier to make combinations. So instead of having to figure out this many combinations, now we only have to figure out this many combinations. It's still a lot, don't get me wrong, but it's much easier. From there, the brute force program literally just goes, okay, is it 0001? Okay, is it 0002? 0003? 0004? And over and over and over and over again until it guesses every single number in the 39 digit passcode. From there, they found another trick to make this process go even faster. Instead of running this whole like guessing code thing on the clock itself, we move that process over to the PC and manage to make this thing go a whole lot faster. By doing this process on the Alarmo itself, this whole thing can take up from like eight to 12 hours. Uh, but doing it on a beefy PC can actually get this time down all the way to three minutes. Then we just repeat this process for the other three lines until we did it. We found our key. Okay, I really hope that explanation made sense. So let me show you what this process looks like in practice. In order to use Brute Forcer, we need to figure out what firmware it's running first. It's really easy. Also, this works with any firmware at the time of recording this, so don't worry. We just type that into here and we're good. So now that we know for sure, for sure, we can read and connect to the processor in the clock, that means we can send commands to it in another tab. Using localhost, we can connect to it, no problem. Cool. Now we're gonna send a halt request to the processor, basically just telling it to stop doing everything for a second. We just need to see what your code is saying right now. Oh man, that sound is gonna get annoying. Okay, now that it's halted, we're gonna run a command to dump the key. But remember, it's still gibberish right now. We don't know what it is yet. 
Okay, now let's open that AES data file that we just ripped using bruteforcer.exe. And there it goes. Now I'll just start going through every combination one by one. Again, not gonna show you the actual code here because, you know, not taking a risk here. You think they actually go after me for a clock? That seems really weird, right? Anyways, maybe my PC is a little bit slower than I thought because I went to go make a sandwich while I did this, but uh, after about 10 minutes, it was done and we had our key. I can't share it here, but I needed to confirm for sure. And man, was I relieved when I got the confirmation from Gary. <laughs> okay, we got the key. Now we can do whatever we want with it, change how it works and use it to do things it was never really designed to do. But uh, here's the thing. What if someone tried to do that with your own keys? You know, like your phone number, your personal address, that type of stuff. Actually. Let me show you something. This is a microphone. It's not a, not a toy, it's a microphone. Right? Okay, so let me show you this website that I'm not gonna reveal the name of for ethical reasons, but it's actually like really not hard to find. This website uses public information from data breaches from companies and like all the other public court information to basically make a profile of people. Now, a friend of mine gave me permission to do this, so I'm just gonna type in his phone number and see how much information shows up. Wow, okay, yeah, everything's here. There's his name, his address, uh, where he's lived before in the past, all of his old phone numbers, all of his nicknames, and a bunch of hyperlinks of other people who were also on record of living in the same address as him. Oh man, I don't feel comfortable showing any of this on camera. Oh my God. It took me two seconds to do this. And that's the problem. This is how easy it is for people to get information about you. And once people have it, they can do some really scary stuff with it. I'm actually really happy that I'm working with Delete Me who sponsored this video because thanks to them, I've been able to find my information in places I wouldn't even have thought to look. Delete Me is a service that looks through hundreds of different data brokers all across the internet for your name, phone number, personal address, whatever it is. And since takedown notices on your behalf, so that way your information doesn't end up on websites like this. Now legally by law, these websites have to take down your personal information if you request to do so, but they make it incredibly complicated and frustrating to do so, almost by design it feels like. But by using Delete Me, these guys check on hundreds of different sites and send takedown notices on all of them, all at once. And it'll keep checking those websites to make sure that your personal information doesn't show up on there again. Best part is, unlike other services, you can also add family members to your plan. So like your mom, your sister, your dad, anyone who might have personal information that could be traced back to you and sends takedown notices for their info too. Listen, it took less than 30 seconds to find my friend's personal information on this website. It's only gonna get easier, not harder to do this. If you wanna give it a shot, you can scan the QR code on the screen or click the link in the description and use the promo code DAMMIT to get 20% off any plan that you want. And thank you again to Delete Me for sponsoring this channel so we can keep making cool videos like this. Okay, so we debugged it, we got the key. Now, what can we actually run in this thing? First one is a really simple one. It's just called USB payload. Literally all it does is just show a picture of a cat. But the picture can be replaced with practically anything, honestly, as long as it's named cat.png or whatever. Hey, you're not supposed to be here. This is hilarious. It actually doesn't scale properly, so it just kind of squishes itself in there, no matter what dimensions you have in there. I call this masterpiece the clock to it. It's really just a proof of concept, honestly. It really was just made to show that, hey, yes, we can show not Nintendo signed stuff on the clock. Also, something funny I noticed, pressing the buttons while in this mode will let you see things like red, oh, green, hey. and blue for some reason, that, that's weird. But it's still cool to see even if this is a proof of concept. I mean, you can show practically anything on here. Okay, next. Obviously, the big thing you wanted to see on this thing, Doom. Now, it's really interesting how this works. Let me show you how we run this thing on here. So in order to put the Alarmo into its built-in debug mode, we need to press all the buttons on- Oh my God, it looks like a face. Oh, hello there. Hi there. We need to press all of the buttons on top. So the snooze, back, and the message buttons all at the same time while plugging it into our computer. If we did it right, the snooze button should start lighting up. Cool. And if we check our computer, it should be showing up as a blank two megabyte drive. <laughs> From there, we drag and drop two files that we compiled. And if everything works, the Alarmo ejects itself and Insta kicks you out. <laughs> I thought that was fascinating but the payload should be running, in theory. I actually had a really rough time figuring out how to compile and get this thing going on my machine. I even resorted to installing Ubuntu on my Windows machine, funny enough. But after a full day and a half of trying, did it work? No, I didn't. Oh, oh my God, oh, it worked, ah, it worked, oh my God. Okay, 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 okay. There it is. So here it is, Doom on the Alarmo. No, I can't. Oh, oh, okay, 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 okay. So I use the top button to kind of move around menus. We got the graphic setting on high. Hell yeah, that's right. All right, cool. Good job, Alarmo. Screen size. Oh, I see. Okay. All right. Yeah, we don't we don't need to touch that. It's okay. So you use the scroll knob to look around. You press it in to move forward. And the mail button is to shoot. I mean, the scroll wheel is really uncomfortable to turn. It's like really not very sensitive. I gotta be honest, this is the most uncomfortable way to play Doom. The Alarma was not designed to be held and controlled like this. But it does work! And it doesn't slow down or lag or anything. I tried my best to get to the end of the first chapter, but like... Man, my hands started cramping really, really bad towards the end. 
Ow. Now you might have noticed there's no sound and that's not an accident. The Alarmo currently has a pretty strict memory limit through the USB loader. So we need to compress, send the file over and then uncompress the WAD file to actually get it to transfer over properly. And with that means cutting out the sound to save some space. Okay, okay, my, uh, my, my hands hurt, my hands hurt, I can't. <sighs> but there it is, Doom running on the Alarmo only a month after its release. So as of now, this is all we really have. The Image Loader app and the Doom Alarmo app is pretty much the only thing that has been officially released. Uh, we don't have a lot. Remember, it's been a month since this thing came out. But there are already some other projects that are in the works. Someone is trying to rewrite the entire firmware of the Alarmo in Rust, which means that for smart people, that means we can start reprogramming things like the screen, the knob, buttons, lights, sound. Uh, but it's still a work in progress right now. Oh, and there's this guy that I've been following that has already managed to get his own custom themes running on the Alarmo. Uh, sadly, he's mentioned he's not planning on releasing anything, unfortunately, uh, but at least we know that it is possible right now and eventually somebody else is gonna be able to figure it out too. But that's about it for the scene right now. Uh, I really expect it to start getting bigger and bigger as months go on. Uh, and I think it will, because here's the thing, all that stuff that you saw me doing with all the soldering and the bridging points and the probes and debugging and all, all that stuff, in the future, you wanted to do any of that because solutions are already being made for you to be able to grab your key without having to take your alarm apart. And when that happens, yeah, this modding scene for this thing is gonna explode entirely. In terms of potential though, I'm thinking this thing has a crazy loud speaker and it can connect to the internet. So uh, maybe we can turn into like a really sick Bluetooth speaker or something like that, or a Spotify machine, I, I don't know. Or we can make it into a really fat flash drive, which uh, somebody already has managed to already pull off. So I don't know. My imagination isn't as creative as you guys. Let me know what else we could possibly do with this thing. Uh, so yeah, that's where we're at right now. A month in and we're already seeing some pretty good progress for the Alarmo. I really do feel like this is just the beginning. Uh, I feel like we're gonna see even more amazing projects in the future. Uh, and I just, I can't wait to see what the community comes up with. Okay, three things I wanna mention real quick. Number one, I'm on Blue Sky now. Uh, if you happen to have a Blue Sky or you're over there, uh, you can come follow me. I'll leave it in the description. You can come check me out there. Okay, number two, big thank you to all the patrons that joined this month. Uh, I actually wanted to shout you guys out this month because it was really, really cool. We got a big group of people. So uh, seriously, thank you to all these people. You guys are super, super cool. A lot of people actually don't know that I have a Patreon. Uh, members were able to see a pretty giant chunk of the video weeks before this ever went live. And the cheapest tier gets you access to literally everything that I post on there uh, since I wanted to make it accessible to as many people as possible. If you wanna see some early previews of the video before they go live, uh, definitely check it down there too. And lastly, again, big thank you to all the people that made these projects and hacking for the alarm possible, uh, especially Gary Odernick in particular, who has been helping me through every step of the way for this video. Really, really big thank you for that guy. Anyways, click over here to check out another video uh, and thank you for watching.